ketones or aldehydes can condense with ammonia or a primary amine to yield amines, which contain a carbon-nitrogen double bond. Like hydrate and acetal formation, which we have seen in the previous videos, this reaction relies upon nucleophilic addition across the carbonyl pi bond. The reaction requires gentle acid catalysis and is freely reversible, much as we saw with hydrate and acetal formation. Additionally, much like those reactions, the position of equilibrium must be controlled using Le Chatelier's principle. If we wish to drive the reaction toward the imine, we can do this by driving off water. Alternatively, an imine can be hydrolyzed using excess water. As we embark on the mechanism, it's worth noting that there is some debate in the chemical literature about the ordering of the mechanistic steps in this reaction. It's possible that nucleophilic attack of the amine on the carbonyl carbon may precede protonation. However, for the sake of clarity, the presentation that follows is presented in a fashion that is parallel to the mechanism for acetal formation that we saw in the previous video. To that end, the carbonyl oxygen is first protonated. With the electrophilicity of the carbonyl thus enhanced, the amine attacks the carbonyl carbon, pushing the pi bonding electrons onto oxygen. The ammonium ion that results from this attack then sheds a proton to the medium to generate a mechanistic intermediate known as the hemiaminal. This is analogous to the hemiacetal that we saw in the video on acetal formation and hydrolysis. Protonation of the hemiaminal on the hydroxyl group generates a good leaving group. The dissociation of water from the substrate affords a resonance stabilized cation. The more stable resonance structure places the positive charge on nitrogen because in this resonance contributor to the hybrid, all atoms possess a complete octet. Loss of a proton from this resonance form results in the formation of the imine product. Although the formation of an imine requires acid catalysis, the pH of the medium cannot be too low. If the solution is too acidic, the amine will be protonated, and when protonated, it is not nucleophilic. This would prevent it from attacking the carbonyl to form the hemiaminal. The optimal pH for imine formation is somewhere around 4.5. Imine hydrolysis involves the exact same mechanistic steps. They simply occur in the reverse order. So if an imine is treated with catalytic acid and excess water, we can drive the reaction toward the original carbonyl containing substrate. This would occur by the initial protonation of the imine nitrogen. The resonance stabilized cation that forms is attacked by a molecule of water and the oxonium ion that forms loses a proton to generate the hemiaminal that is the mechanistic intermediate midway between the carbonyl containing compound and the imine. The hemiaminal is susceptible to further reaction. When it is protonated on nitrogen, an ammonium ion forms, and this good leaving group dissociates from the molecule generating another resonance stabilized cation. Loss of a proton regenerates the original carbonyl containing compound 
which in this case happened to be a ketone. In this specific example, cyclopentanone is treated with methylamine in the presence of catalytic acid in order to form an imine. If we drive off water during this reaction, the equilibrium will be pushed toward the imine. And that imine is formed through the initial protonation of cyclopentanone on the carbonyl oxygen. Methylamine then attacks the carbonyl carbon, displacing the carbonyl pi bonding electrons onto oxygen. The ammonium ion thus formed loses a proton, forming the hemiaminal. The hemiaminal, when protonated on oxygen, loses water as a good leaving group. The cation that is thus formed is resonance stabilized and need only shed a proton to form the final product, the imine. The imine could be hydrolyzed in aqueous acid if desired. And this process occurs through protonation of the imine, which activates it toward the nucleophilic addition of water. The resulting oxonium ion loses a proton to generate the hemiaminal. Protonation of the hemiaminal on nitrogen produces a good leaving group. When methylamine dissociates from the molecule, the resonance stabilized cation that results will easily lose a proton to regenerate cyclopentanone. In summary, imine formation takes place between a ketone or aldehyde and ammonia or a primary amine. Gentle acid catalysis is required for this reaction. To form the imine, water is driven off to push the equilibrium in the desired direction. However, when imine hydrolysis is preferred, aqueous acid is used, and the presence of excess water pushes the equilibrium toward the ketone or aldehyde. It's also worth noting that similar reactions can be performed with related reagents to generate products that look like imines but contain slightly different functional groups. In other words, cyclopentanone could be treated with hydrazine. In the presence of gentle acid catalysis, and the imine-like product that is formed is known as a hydrazone. And that's because it bears an additional amino group on the imine-type nitrogen. Alternatively, cyclopentanone can be treated with hydroxylamine in the presence of gentle acid catalysis. This also produces an imine-like compound but this one is known as an oxime because it possesses an additional hydroxyl group on the imine type nitrogen. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.